Now we've learned about edge turning and adding verts using the terrain painter, we're ready to start adding the edges to our texture shapes. So we're going to use the terrain painter for this and if I just zoom in to our T area. So we want to go terrain, surface, terrain painter, set our terrain painter to the usual settings, one nought and add density. And we're now going to trace around the shape, adding verts all the way around. And this will create the edges, see there, so that we can apply the textures. Uh, I'm just going to pop a couple of verts inside just to pull it into nice neat spoke like effect. You never want very stretched edges, very narrow edges. You want to keep your triangles as neat as you can. Most of the time it's it's not always possible but if they're too thin and stretched you'll get uh, marks and things when you create your terrain. So I'm just now going to add a ring around the outside for the same reason to disperse these edges. We, we never want too many edges coming from one point so it's always worth popping in a few extra verts around. We don't want to use too many obviously the less verts we use on the course the better but we do want a nice spacing between the edges. We don't want any narrow ones and stretched stretched out faces if we can help it. It'll also help when we move things, if we've got more verts around, if we raise this area for instance, it will create a much more natural slope if we've got more verts around, otherwise it would be just be a steep slant down to these ones or before I put those in all the way out to the next nearest point 100 feet away. So. That's how we mark out our areas and now we've just got to apply a texture to it. So we'll go to face and using the drag select we can highlight all the areas in our tee box and we can choose a texture for now we're just going to use the default ones. So the first tee area and apply. We've now got a, a T area. It's not perfectly shaped at the moment. You'll see I've got sort of sharp angled edges around here. That's because we haven't yet used the edge sharpening to pull in our textures and create the curves. But we can do this when we've got our textures in. So I'm going to do the same thing to this fairway back to the terrain painter so I want to go surface and start plotting in our fairway like I said in a previous video we don't have to worry about these funny uh, mistakes we've got because we're not going to trace exactly around them we can create a nice smooth curve just ignoring the bits that went wrong. Sometimes we'll find there's a point like that one that's already usable so I'll, I'll tend to just use those rather than add more points. If one's similar like that one there I'll just leave that there and you can always uh, move them later if you do want it exactly at a certain distance but For the initial play testing, 
I don't really know whether I've made these fairways too wide, too narrow. Uh, I haven't yet decided the sort of terrain I'm going to have, whether they're going to be nice open areas to the sides or maybe densely packed woodland. Uh, so I really don't know exactly what I want yet. I'm just getting the basic shapes in so I've got something to work with. Whoops, carried away there, that, that's fine where it is. Now the spacings between the verts you add is really down to personal taste and how much you're likely to move them later, but you can always add more in uh, later anyway. You tend to need more points when you're going around curves. And now I'm just going to come down the fairway and just break these long faces up a bit. We don't like long faces. <laughs> Have another one there, and there, and there. So that's our fairway. So again, back to face. Drag select. Remember, we don't need to do it in one go. We can stop. And as long as we hold the shift key down when we restart, it will carry on adding. So I can just scroll along, add the faces in I want. Should have done the green first, actually. Never mind. As the green's completely encased by this texture, it won't actually matter. If we had it cutting through, it would be difficult to plot round through two textures. It's much easier when you're putting the verts in to work on one solid texture. If it's going over various uh, textures, the auto aligning of the edges won't happen when it changes textures. So. That could be a problem, but it won't in this instance. So I'll just turn that to fairway. And now I'll just plot in the green. And again. Add some more verts in. I tend to add quite a few more when I'm doing the greens because I know I'm going to need them later anyway to create the uh, undulations. So I tend to break them up into the sort of sized areas I want to use. So a few there. Yeah, that'll do. So again, just face it off with the drag. Add the green. And now we're just going to sharpen these edges uh, to create the proper curves. Now for this, we're going to need the perimeter edge select that we've learned in a previous video. So we're going to go to edge. This is the perimeter. And I'll just demonstrate on the green for starters. We choose an area inside, click, and you'll see it's gone red around the green edge because every edge around the green has been selected. Now. This is the tool we haven't discussed yet, which is the sharpen up the top here, sharpness. Click on that and you'll see it says sharpness naught. Now this is completely unsharpened and why we've got all these funny jaggy type edges. As we sharpen this, it'll act like a drawstring. If you imagine this was a 
a coat hood or something and there's a couple of strings say here coming out if we pull on these it will tighten up the string and start pulling all these edges in so if we click the naught to one you'll see it's pulled it in a bit and another click again and the final click it's completely smooth we've got lovely curves around our greens now four is the sharpest we can have it set but there's also a fifth setting which is back at no if I go back to naught if we go down one to minus one that is exactly the same as four but it's quicker obviously we haven't got to click one two three four we can just click down one click and we've got minus one and that will set it exactly the same to the sharpest setting so so we've got our green nice and curved we can do the same now to the fairway so again edge click on select perimeter click inside and the whole of our fairway is now selected you'll notice also the green has been selected as well because that's also a perimeter of this fairway texture so if I'd have just used the edge on the fairway I could have sharpened the green and the fairway at the same time but I'm trying not to confuse you too much at the moment so I'm trying to do things as simple as possible so we've got our fairway selected again sharpness down to minus one a nice curve fairway uh, the last one to do is the T exactly the same select sharpness minus one now once we've done this there's no need for these shapes we created around our fairway green and T so we can now delete those so if we go to plan and select we can simply box select so grab the edge there it is highlighted and delete same with the fairway box select the edge of it delete and our green delete now what I'll also do uh, is paint in verts around our fairway edge, the same as I did with the T, and around the green, just to smarten it up a bit, make it easier later on to work with and when we start moving things. Surface. And you'll notice when I plant with the train painter our selected surface unselects so that's one of the things that can be a little irritating you can select a lot of faces um, and then realize you want to put another vert in first you'll put the vert in and all the faces you just spent time selecting will be gone so try and make sure you've selected everything got the verts in before you select uh, everything or you have to reselect them all so I'll just go around the edge here you won't be guaranteed uh, that the edge will auto rotate which it, it's doing nice behaving itself as you get into small areas like this sometimes you'll find if there's a few verts nearby it won't know which ones to connect to so you'll still end up having to rotate a few edges but for the most part it does a, a great job as it is so again around the outside don't think I've had any double verts I might have had on when I was doing the T at the start I'll just check that What adding these verts will do is change the terrain height slightly because as we add them 
it's recalculating the smooth fall off and pulling things into slightly different angles so you can see as you click sometimes the shadow the lighting changes on the terrain because the terrain's actually moving slightly uh, which is something later on when you you've got planted areas you need to be aware of because if the ground moves as you add an extra vert you could end up with your plants floating in midair which isn't something we want so I'm just going to check now on this T see if I did get any double verts I don't think I have actually it's all gone nicely oh well we've now got our uh, main textures in